I'm here in the Aratorium, the Aro 3D dubbing theatre uh, here in Galaxy Studios in Belgium and we're going to take a look at the different audio formats that are out there for immersive sound and I'm joined here by Sven and by Robin both from uh, Arrow Technologies and we'll just take, take a look and go through the different formats because of course there's a popular misconception that 5.1 is 3D because we've got the different dimensions because actually in fact 5.1 is 2D so perhaps if we go back to, to stereo the stereo is definitely one dimensional and that's um, if you look at it from a like mathematical perspective um, in describing a space or an object, how many dimension uh, dimensions or axes you, you really need is stereo is one dimensional because every movement can be described on one axis and that's the x axis. If we go the next step to 5.1 or surround formats, we, we add a second dimension which is the y axis so we can describe where a position of an object or whatever audio element is by um, taking an X and an Y. Yeah, uh, so we've got the X assets that effectively the between the left, left and, and right, right speaker, <coughs> and now we add the Y, which is front, front and to back. back. That's basically it. For us, the next logical evolutionary step is at the third dimension, and that's the set axis, and that allows us to describe um, in a space um, not only X and Y, but also set. So but of course, historically, with ambisonics and the sound field mic, we've, we have had those three axes, although it's been a little bit of a challenge to be able to play audio back. <laughs> That's true, and ambisonics <laughs> is definitely a three-dimensional format. Yeah, But, but the, the conventional surround 5.1 and 7.1 or 4.0, whatever, is definitely not. Yes, 2D. 2D. In this new three-dimensional world, we effectively appear to already have two formats. We have your Arrow, Arrow 3D or Arrow 11.1 format, mm -hmm. and then we've got Dolby Atmos. How do the what are the similarities and what are the differences between the two immersive formats? Well, I would say the two main differences are that um, our format is still a pure channel-based format. And um, the second, w while o Dolby Atmos is a combined, it's a hybrid channel-based, object-based technology. And um, the second and probably the most important difference is the speaker layout. We have a three-layered speaker, speaker layout. So we have a, um, a l our lower layer, we have a dedicated height layer, and we have our top layer. While in the other format, we basically only have two layers. So we've got the normal 7, 9, what? 5, seven, one, seven yeah. one, and then, and then the top two surround speakers yeah. on the ceiling. And those are the speakers that tend to have the objects, single element objects that are then uh, steered around. That would be a question directed to, to Dolby Atmos, but yeah, yeah probably but yeah. that's the case, yeah. And so uh, coming back to uh, 3D uh, and the RO 3D format, what are the advantages do you feel uh, of the RO 3D format? Again, definitely the speaker layout. We feel that with our second, and that for us is the most important layer, the height layer, we are able to reproduce and to capture um, a degree of, of naturalism and, and realistic soundscape creation which has never been f before there before really so for us that the ceiling channel is it's uh, it's nice to have it's an effect channel for flyover effects or for narration but the real immersive um, character comes from from our additional height, so height layer, second the second layer, layer. right mm -hmm. which is angled at roughly 30 degree from from the listening position yeah so we've got here we've got a the the, the conventional uh, 5171 right. system yeah and then much higher up we've got the, your high layer including across the screen mm -hmm. uh, and it's the, the it's the combination of those two layers that really makes it work and then you right. add the the top layer the voice sometimes called the voice of god channel exactly. but the top layer adds something extra but actually that's the first thing that you can potentially do without and i suspect with 
domestic installations, mm. that's probably going to uh, going to be good news. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> Um, but yes, I mean certainly when I, uh, you know, having heard the different demonstrations with with Arrow 3D, it, it it is a very very different experience. And I what I found is I've stopped listening to the speakers yep. and started experiencing the sound, whatever that sound right. feel yeah. happened to be. And, and that's that's kind of like that's a completely different approach than than in an object-based technology mm -hmm. where you can address each speaker individually and you have these point sources, which is, and, and don't get me wrong, it's a great technology and, and you can be creative and everything, but um, the one thing you don't want, especially in, 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 in a cinema application, if you're telling a story and most of the time that the story is happening in front of you on the screen, you don't want to uh, distract people. By, by these little elements happening in a room or happening around you where you, you get distracted and you have this, this exit sign reaction sometimes that uh, then you, you lose the connection to the screen and you lose the connection to the story. But this is not necessarily the case. If, if this is used in, in, in like proportions then and not too gimmicky, it can, it but can uh, but, uh, but I suspect it's the same with any technology it's about, off, you know, so often we use this phrase, you know, less is more. Right. It, it's about not overdoing it. I, I remember in the very early days of radio stereo where we did ping pong, it was, you know, you were in the left speaker, you were in the right speaker, and it all got very uh, ping pong. And then yeah. we all realized, okay, no, 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 we just bring it down. And again, you'd the early days of surround, we were throwing stuff into the surround yeah. channel, and it, yeah. whoa, no. And I suppose, presumably, the issues, you know, the same thing, whether it's, Dolby Atmos or RO3D, you don't overdo it. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So you were talking that you've got, that your system is largely a channel based, so we've got 5.1 layer, another 5.1 layer, or 7.1 layer, 5.1 layer, and then your ceiling channel, so it's, it's channel based. Whereas Dolby Atmos obviously has a cha is a combination of channel based and uh, object based. Um, so how does how does that uh, how does that sort of compare? I have to g go back a little bit. Um, when we introduced our format um, into digital cinema, and and basically when we developed or when Wilfried developed the speaker layout um, and experimented with, um, it was always very important for us to be compatible to the the regular two D surround standards like five point one and seven point one. So we based our format essentially on an existing 5.1. And in cinema, the 5.1, there's a reason why we have array speakers in the surrounds, for instance. We have such a large auditorium and so many people in that auditorium um, listening to, to a movie with three screen channels where one channel is really the dedicated center channel. And again, for a reason. Um, to give everybody in the auditorium, in the audience, th the more or less the same experience. And we basically are following that philosophy in keeping the arrays in the surrounds and having basically a top array so that we can make sure we have the largest sweet spot possible. Because the moment you start um, putting elements or objects into dedicated speakers all around you, it really depends on where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. You can only have the best experience essentially on the position where the mixer was sitting. Mm -hmm. And that's only a few places or a few seats in the auditorium. And that's one of the main reasons why we still have the arrays. Um, and so with going with your channel-based system, with your two layers and your and your top channel, what you're finding is that the experience of somebody sat over here is very similar to somebody sat there or somebody right. sat over there. You, they're getting a very similar experience. So that, as you say, that sweet spot is pretty well the whole theater. Right, yeah. yeah. We always have that during demonstrations, even with a point source ITU setup that we tell people, um, now you're sitting on your chair, but stand up, walk around the room and, and, and listen how how equally these soundscapes are really. And that's something that's really incredible. By having more speakers, it's really the, 
and channels, the sweet spot is really much more enhanced and larger than, mm -hmm. than in a like smaller stereo 5.1. That was actually setup. when I first experienced R 3 d when I was actually, there was just an, an ITU setup and it was in, in, a, in a larger space and the setup was in the middle. And actually I was walking, you know, not in the circle, actually behind it. And I still had a sense of height. I could still hear the differences and, well, not just height, but also placement. And for me, that was incredible because in five one, you have that very little. I mean, it's a little bit there, but in aura, like the sweet spot just becomes bigger. Like even if you're almost outside of yeah. your circle. So it's just like, like you're like entertaining the whole room around you. It's filled with sound no matter where you are. I mean, of course, there is, we also have some kind of sweet spot. Um, l listening in, in, in a like middle seat position always gives you the best experience also in terms of like what's happening in panning and to localize things that that changes but like the impression that that you are immersed by sound that is something that doesn't really change no matter where you are mm. and at the end in the cinema theater every seat pays the same amount of money mostly i think sure so you would expect that you know yeah. it translates to, to i mean th money. there are definitely advantages um to object-based technology and that's one of and we get that from the industry people are interested in in object based technology and and i mean dolby atmos is not the first object based technology there are other companies and the smpt are looking at sort right. of some sort of open source yeah. object based yeah. system yeah the, the, the smt is is looking for basically a standardization of um, an object based uh, the, the technology the, they are looking for an open standard something that everybody can adopt and our ideas or philosophy and um, the, the, the strategies that, that we are going to adopt whatever open standard there will be coming from the SMT to make sure that um, everybody can, can work with that open standard and it's not tied to, to one particular standard. And, and I think that the, the word open in the open standard is something that's just modern. It, it feels like this is the right thing. Open source do. software. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. exactly. In terms of moving on, so the issues of, of effectively getting your format out to the effectively the consumer, but obviously via the distribution networks, how are you finding that? Because in some respects, I it seems almost a David and Goliath sort of situation where you've obviously Dolby is a very, uh, a very, very large established company and are um, film companies taking it up? Is it h how are you actually managing to get it into, get it out there? Yeah, well, for digital cinema, we um, are lucky to have a very, very strong partner with Barco. Um, Barco is also a Belgian company and they um, are world marked leaders in digital projection, mm -hmm. right? Cool. Uh, outside North America, but, but still. Yeah. Um, and we have a very good and healthy relationship with them. So um, we do have a um, good, solid fundament to work from. And b but still, you know, um, Dolby has been around for so many years. They did great things for Film Sound. Um, but we are in it to win it because we believe that we have an incredibly good format. And so we don't really care that much about what the others do. We only focus on what we are doing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And every time I go into a studio and, and talk with these people and, and get this, this positive response and, and everybody is like really liking what they hear and like working with our tools and like working in our format, this is just the best motivation there is. And but presumably, obviously, and I can certainly you know, testament the, the experience in the audio 3, 3D format. So selling it in inverted commas to the dubbing mixers, et cetera, is, is not a difficult job. I suppose it's moving it on and actually selling it to, to, the, to the film companies and, and uh, the producers who perhaps are saying, hang on, have I got to mix this in yet another format? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the, the key difficulty is, is trying to get it to a bigger mass. Is, is I mean, that's obviously always the hard part in a new format is you have to, because our experience is that once people actually hear it, they are impressed and they say, wow, we like this, but actually 
getting it to as many people as possible to experience it. Yeah. And that is obviously the hard part. And, and, and being invited to, to get the chance to show, to that. that's, that's one of the difficulties. But, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, by now we have so many installations um, on the commercial side, but also in post-production studios. Um, we basically work with almost all the big Hollywood studios and have um, installation in their post-production facilities. So um, this puts us in a very good position. And uh, the demand coming from the commercial installation, from the theaters, triggers automatically the distribution side of the mm -hmm. studios. And they ask for the content, which, again, is, is really good for us. And we have good relations with the studios and, and the creative people over there. And but yeah, it's a lot of hard work. It's a hard and are more and more films being released in the format? Right, the yeah. Format. We did basically all the, the big blockbusters this year, uh, which is great. I mean, driving around LA and seeing all the posters, knowing they are all also released in all the 3D, it's just fantastic. I was thinking of yeah, a really good example of where the format works with the height channels and the ceiling channel with so many uh, flyovers in terms of how to train a dragon too. Yeah. I mean, that must have been an absolute gift in many respects yeah. to be able to, to present it in the in the RO format? Absolutely, that, that's been a great experience. I mean, the, the relationship we have with DreamWorks, um, DreamWorks was one of the early adopters of our format, and that's, that's just incredible. Th these people are so professional, and um, working with them is, is just, it's just a pleasure. And th that particular movie was done at Skywalker, which is like just a nice place to be. <laughs> Like all the other places in LA as well. <laughs> <laughs> he says quickly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed, for both of you, for uh, taking the time to uh, explain yeah. this, and uh, good luck. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much.